It was a lovely summer day, and Miffy asked her mother and father if her friend Grunty could stay with her overnight. Yes, said her mother, and it's warm enough for you both to sleep in the tent in the back garden. Oh, that will be fun, said Miffy happily. Father Bunny said he would take her to Poppy Pig's house to collect her little niece Grunty. Off they went in Father Bunny's car to Poppy Pig's house. Hello, Poppy, said Father Bunny. Miffy would like to invite Grunty to stay with her tonight. You can pack her things and I will drive her to our house. Soon they were driving back to Miffy's house. And the two young girls were very excited about sleeping in a tent. When they arrived at Miffy's house, her mother had already set up the tent. It will be such fun, Grunty, said Miffy. I hope you're not afraid of the dark. I won't be scared if you are with me, Miffy, said Grunty. The two little girls snuggled inside their sleeping bags, inside the dark tent. What is that sound? whispered Grunty. I'm scared. It's only the crickets, whispered Miffy. They always chirp at night. You mustn't be afraid of them. What is that? whispered Grunty, who was really afraid. That's just an owl who always sits in the tree at night, whispered Miffy. You mustn't be afraid of her. Grunty was afraid, and she said, Why don't we move the tent to Poppy's house tomorrow? I'm used to the sounds in her garden. The two little friends snuggled closer to each other and finally fell asleep. When the morning came, they woke up and Mother Bunny brought them breakfast. Did you sleep well? Mother Bunny asked them. Grunty was afraid of the sounds in our garden, Mother. Can we move the tent to Poppy's house tonight? That evening, Father Bunny packed up the tent and drove the two girls to Poppy Pig's house. Can we put the tent in your garden tonight? Father Bunny asked. Grunty feels she would be more comfortable sleeping in your garden. Miffy is a very brave little bunny, so I don't think she will be afraid. Of course, said Poppy. Later that night, the two friends were tucked into their tent in Poppy's garden. Grunty was at home and fell asleep right away. But not Miffy. She heard noises. Oh dear, whispered Miffy, who was scared. Now I'm afraid. What is that sound? Wake up, Grunty. There's a strange noise I've never heard before. Grunty began to laugh. That's just my Aunt Poppy snoring. I hear that all the time. Now both girls started to laugh. They laughed and laughed until they both fell asleep. Miffy's school teacher was a very nice bunny and all the children loved her. When they found out that it would soon be her birthday, they began to think about what they could make for her. Miffy and her classmates talked about it in the playground. Why don't we sew her a new dress? suggested Aggie. That would be too difficult, said Winnie. We don't know her exact size. How about a huge box of sweets? I love sweets, said Melanie. I think she would like a big ice cream better, said Aggie. Food is a good idea, said Miffy. I think our teacher likes good food. 
Why don't we make a classroom restaurant for her? Yes, said Melanie. Some of us can be the cooks and some of us can be the waiters. What kind of food shall we make? asked Winnie. How about carrot soup? asked Miffy. My mother will help me to make carrot soup. Soon they all agreed on what each of them would do. Miffy and her mother were soon busy. Chopping carrots and cooking them. They made a large pan of delicious carrot soup. The other bunnies were making waiters' aprons and cooks' hats. They decorated some dishes for the restaurant table. They wrote a restaurant menu and coloured it in. They wanted the teacher's desk to look like a real restaurant table. When the day of the teacher's birthday came, all the little bunnies were giggling and whispering together. Their teacher wondered what was happening in her classroom. Then, all the little bunnies began to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear teacher. Happy birthday to you. The teacher was so surprised. How nice of you all to remember, she said. She was very happy. We have a special surprise for you, said Melanie. Yes, we are going to make a birthday restaurant dinner for you, right here in our classroom, said Miffy. So they put a beautiful tablecloth on the teacher's desk and a candlestick and a menu card. The decorated dishes, a glass for water, and a knife, a fork, and a spoon. Thank you, children, said their teacher. This is a beautiful and original restaurant, and I really like it. Then she looked lovingly at all her students. But she felt a little sad that all of her pupils were standing there to watch her eat. So she said, I think I would enjoy this even more if all you cooks and waiters joined in, why don't you push all your desks together and then we can all sit down at the same table? I think there's enough of this lovely carrot soup for us all. The teacher got some bowls and spoons from the school kitchen and she and all the little bunnies enjoyed the wonderful meal. There was enough delicious carrot soup for everyone. It was the grandest birthday party ever in their classroom. At Miffy's school, the children were learning about nature. Their teacher said, Nature can be big things like trees and mountains. It can also be little things that you can find anywhere, even in your garden. Tomorrow, each of you must bring something from nature into our classroom. All the bunny children were excited and they began whispering together, thinking about what they could find. When Miffy arrived home, Father Bunny was in the garden. Father, she said, our teacher wants each of us to bring something from nature to school. What do you think I should bring? Well, just look around you, Miffy. Right here in our garden, there is nature all around us. Miffy looked and she saw a bright red apple. She saw birds flying in the sky. She saw a little worm crawling out of the ground. She saw some beautiful stones. And of course, there were many flowers all around. She didn't know what she should choose. Her father said, In the morning, why don't you pick a nice red apple? After you show it to your class, you can eat it for lunch. 
Miffy thought that was a clever idea. In the morning, she went out into the garden, and just as she was about to pick the apple, a beautiful butterfly landed right on her arm. That's it, whispered Miffy. I'll bring this beautiful butterfly to my class. So she walked slowly and quietly towards her school, being very careful not to frighten the butterfly. Good morning, Snuffy, whispered Miffy. You can walk along beside me, but you must be very quiet. Snuffy wagged her tail happily. She gave a little bark. And the butterfly flew away. Miffy was very sad. Everyone else in the class had brought interesting things. Melanie had found an empty bird's nest. Winnie brought some bright, colourful leaves. Aggie had a beautiful stone. They each had something from nature. But Miffy had nothing. Then Snuffy, who was waiting outside the school door, gave another happy bark. And Miffy suddenly had an idea. She raised her hand. Please, miss, she said. I did bring something from nature, but I'm not sure I can bring her inside. Her? asked the teacher. Do you have a friend outside? Yes, said Miffy. She's my good friend Snuffy. Isn't a dog a wonderful part of nature? All the other bunnies laughed, and so did the teacher. Yes, Miffy, she said. You are right. Snuffy is a lovely little dog, and she is certainly an important part of nature. Bring her in. One morning, Miffy was awakened by her mother, who whispered, Miffy, get up. Today is your father's birthday, and I want to bake him a chocolate birthday cake. Oh, what fun, said Miffy. Father loves chocolate cake, and so do I. May I help you bake the cake, mother? And may I lick the spoon? Yes, yes, Miffy dear, said Mother Bunny. But the problem is, I have no chocolate and not enough butter or flour. Could you go and ask Auntie Alice for some? Oh, yes, Mother. Auntie Alice is always baking cakes, so she will surely have those things. Mother Bunny gave Miffy a basket and said, Shall I write a list for you? I can remember them by myself. Chocolate? Butter and... and... Flour, said Miffy's mother. Yes, flour, said Miffy. I was just going to say flour. All right, Miffy, off you go, said her mother. But remember, no flour, no cake. Miffy took the basket and repeated to herself. Chocolate, butter, flour. Chocolate, butter, flour. As she walked along, Miffy met Poppy Pig, who was also carrying a basket. Hello, Miffy, said Poppy. Where are you going? Chocolate, butter, flour, said Miffy. You're trying to remember something you need, said Poppy. Me too. I'm on my way to the shops. I must remember to buy some vanilla, cream and flour. I'm on my way to Auntie Alice's house to borrow some chocolate, cream and flour, said Miffy. It's good that you can remember what you need, said Poppy. Vanilla, cream, flour. Vanilla, cream, flour. Vanilla, cream. Then Miffy saw Barbara Bear. Good morning, Miffy, 
said Barbara Bear. I just came from the shop and I bought some potatoes, milk and sugar. That's interesting, said Miffy. I'm just on my way to my Auntie Alice's house to borrow some vanilla, cream and sugar. Vanilla, cream, sugar. Vanilla, cream, sugar. Vanilla, cream and sugar. Thank you, Auntie Alice, said Miffy. Here you are, Mother, said Miffy. Here is the vanilla, cream and sugar. You see, I remembered everything. Miffy's mother smiled. Are you sure you remembered everything? Where is the chocolate? Where is the butter? Where is the flour? Oh dear, said Miffy. I'm sorry I got all mixed up. Now there will be no chocolate cake for my father's birthday. Don't cry, Miffy dear, said her mother. With the vanilla, cream and sugar, I can make some wonderful birthday ice cream. That evening, when they all sat down for the birthday dinner, Father Bunny said, This vanilla ice cream is delicious. What a splendid idea. Mother gave Miffy a wink, and they all enjoyed the birthday ice cream. One autumn day, Miffy was on her way to visit Boris and Barbara Bear. Along the way, she saw beautiful yellow, brown and red leaves. How beautiful they look, she thought. I would like to put them into picture frames and hang them on the walls. Miffy began to gather up the most beautiful leaves. By the time she reached Boris and Barbara's house, she had a basket full of them. Hello, Boris. Hello, Barbara. Look what I have. Autumn leaves in many bright colours. She laid them out carefully on Boris and Barbara's kitchen table. Can you help me make some picture frames, please, Boris? Yes, I can, Miffy, said Boris. They will make lovely gifts. So they went out to Boris's workshop to find some nice wood to make the frames with. While they were busy, a breeze blew through the house. Oh dear, said Miffy. Where are all of my leaves? That's funny, said Barbara. But look, Miffy, we still have six leaves left. One, two, three, four, five, six. That will be plenty, said Barbara. Let's go and finish the picture frames. But as they went to finish the picture frames, a bird flew in and took away another leaf. My goodness, said Barbara. We had six leaves left and now we only have five. Boris quickly closed the window. We don't want to lose any more of these beautiful leaves. I have made five frames, so we need five leaves. Well, said Miffy, I think that we still have enough. So they put the five leaves into five frames. Look how beautiful they are, said Miffy. You and Barbara shall have one. Thank you, Miffy, said Boris and put their framed leaf on the wall. You still have four frames to give us presents. With the four framed leaves packed in a shopping bag, Miffy began to walk home. When she left the forest, she met Poppy Pig. Hello, Miffy, said Poppy. What are you carrying? I found some beautiful leaves in the forest and Boris Bear made five frames for them. I gave them one, so I have four left. Would you like one? Oh, yes, please, said Poppy. May I have a red one? Of course you can, said Miffy. If you take this one, I will still have three frames left. 
Thank you, Miffy, said Poppy. It's beautiful. When Miffy arrived home, she said, Look, Father, look, Mother. I found some lovely leaves in the forest, and Boris Bear made some frames for them. I would like to give one to each of you. Her mother and father were very pleased and hung the framed leaves on the wall. Miffy still had one frame left. I'll do something very special with this one, said Miffy. Puppy, grunty, Boris Bear Puppy. 